pray tonight for our few minutes of study. I want us to look in the Psalms, Psalm 96. <clears throat> Four verses of Scripture I want to share with you here and <clears throat> use this as the basis of this lesson to lead us off here in 2024 in our Wednesday night studies. In verse 1 of Psalm 96, it says, O sing unto the Lord a new song, sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless His name, show forth His salvation from day to day. Declare His glory among the heathen, His wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. This passage is one of several that we have in the Psalms referring to singing a new song unto the Lord. And I give you some scripture references there that you may want to look up when you have the opportunity to do so that speak similar words about singing a new song unto the Lord. As we do that, it's something we ought to do every day, but as we do it, it could be a selection of words from songs that we're already familiar with. If that be the case, or if it is indeed something new that we just express from our heart to the Lord, um, the words are to give glory and praise and honor to Him. You know, we have some great songs. Uh, we could name several if we took time to go around. One of the great ones is the song, How Great Thou Art. Um, and a lot of times whenever I hear that song, I'm touched by it, just thinking about the awesome power of God, His greatness, how wonderful that He really is. <clears throat> and another song that I like is the hymn entitled to God be the glory. Um, everything that we experience in life, we ought to give God glory for all of the blessings, all of the provisions that he uh, gives to us each and every day. We have a lot to be thankful for. So we ought to sing a song to him every day. And sometimes we do. I'm not going to say I sing every day, but <clears throat> a lot of times I do. Sometimes I'm singing in the shower, and uh, you probably are as well, <clears throat> and probably hopeful that nobody's paying attention. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> you know, th at times there's just things that uh, speak to our heart and cause us to respond uh, in an audible way, giving praise to the Lord. Whenever I think of singing a new song, like the psalmist is talking about in this passage and in others, and understanding that it is something that we should do to show forth the Lord's salvation from day to day, that reminds me that uh, this should be a part of how we express ourselves as we live our life for the Lord every day. We're three days into this new year of 2024, so I would like to encourage us to think in terms of how we can give the Lord praise and honor each and every day that we live this year with a song or with words that express unto him how grateful we are from the depths of our heart for his goodness and his mercy to us. Um, let's think about living our life every day uh, so as to sing some sort of a worshipful song unto the Lord. How gracious and wonderful he is. Some time ago, I received an email. I don't know what I did with it. I don't remember if I printed it out or uh, deleted it. I expect it's deleted by now, but somebody 
and I do not know who put these things together, but they were shared with me and suggested to be some goals and actions and so forth, which could positively affect us in terms of how we wish to give praise to our Lord each and every day. So I wanted to offer them to you tonight and go through them with you. You have them on the outline, you can read them. Uh, but I may comment on uh, more than one of them as we go through them and talk about them tonight. There are 20 of them that I have given you here <clears throat> that come from that little piece along with some of what I have added to it that hopefully as we look at 2024 in front of us and think about praising the Lord with a worshipful song every day, these are some things we can do that will influence that song and make it stronger make it more meaningful coming from our heart to the Lord. Number one, when you wake up in the morning, think in terms of completing the sentence that you have there with the blank in it. My purpose is to do what today? What should I do today? In the morning when you wake up, uh, think about what your purpose for the day is. What do you need to accomplish? What goals? What actions? Uh, what is my purpose for this day as I live my life for the Lord? Number two, the suggestion is to live each day with the three E's of positive mental reinforcement, which are energy, enthusiasm, and empathy energy to do the things that we need to do and do it with a joyous spirit and be enthused that we have the privilege to do what we do and at the same time show forth an empathetic empathetic spirit with those that are uh, in need of having empathy shared with them that will uh, certainly be very meaningful to us in our lives. Number three is to read the Bible more along with other good Christian materials for spiritual nourishment. There are things like our daily bread and other devotionals. Rosalie and I started on Monday with David Jeremiah's brand new devotional, Walking with Jesus. And it's a great devotional piece to use every single day. It's dated with a devotion for every day this year. I like what I'm already reading. And we've been, I've told you this before, it's not bragging about what we do, but we've been doing this now for uh, the last several years. And it's been very meaningful uh, to us to be able to have those devotions each morning along with following that up with personal reading, personal time that I spend with the Lord in reading um, through the Bible as I try to do each year and have done for the last several years. Uh, I still continue that in 2024 because there are times whenever this, the, the Holy Spirit speaks to my heart from uh, passages that I'm reading and looking at and it just uh, becomes overwhelming at times. And you start praising the Lord and thinking about uh, giving Him honor for His Word, which is so wonderful and so special, so precious to us. I shared this with someone, I'll not call their name, but I shared this with someone uh, at the end of 2022, and I had a devotional book that I had two copies of and I said, you know, I have this book, I'll give this book to you with a very strong encouragement to you to use it every day. And the person said, I will, I promise you, I will use it every day. Several times during the course of 2023, that individual upon seeing me has said, you know, Joe, 
we've been using that devotional just just as you encouraged us to and as i promised you we would do we have been using it and i tell you it has really changed my life having a good devotional will change your life um, i can't overemphasize that follow that up with bible reading and i know we talked about bible reading a few weeks ago in our wednesday night study but here as we get the new year underway it's a wonderful time to implement that and i like what brother julius said the other night whenever we were talking about it, that you don't try to catch up if you've missed you just keep going forward and you uh, you go forward and there will be days and times whenever you'll have more time to read than maybe you do at other times and when you do that uh, that can just uh, really help you to get through the Bible uh, in a, a regular reading time during the course of the year. Number four is to make time for daily prayer. We need that. It puts us in touch with God. Aren't you grateful for having a throne of grace that we can go directly to the Lord with? The other day, uh, the thought just occurred to me. I don't know why it was upon my mind, but I was thinking about, for some reason, folks that believe that they have to go through a priest or somebody to get to the Lord. And right then and there, I just it just come forth out of my, my mouth. Lord, I'm thankful I can go directly to you. I can come directly to you. I don't have to go through somebody else. Father, thank you for the direct access that I have through the throne of grace to you. Uh, I need that, and I suggest that we all need that. To enhance our joy as we live throughout the year, number five is to try to make at least three people smile every day. Okay, I see one smiling here tonight. I see two, I see three. So thank you, Lord. <laughs> now a few more of you have joined in to smile. Try to make at least three people smile every day and it'll put a smile on your face as well. Number six, do not waste your precious energy on gossip, issues of the past, negative thoughts, or things you cannot control. Far, far too many people do that. And it puts them in a state of discouragement. Far, far too many people live in the past in terms of their thought processes and so forth. They are thinking about things that happened 35, 40, 50 years ago that should have been forgotten a long time ago, but they're still rehashing those things and bringing them up in their mind. And uh, if you will, they chew the cud on it. You know what that means. We're out here in the country. It's like they chew the cud on it. We need to invest our interest and our energy, invest our energy in the positives of the present the good things that the Lord is blessing us with, the opportunities that the Lord blesses us with. We need to invest our energies in those things and not waste our energies trying to rehash those things of the past that we can't change. They're already recorded in history. What's done is done. It cannot be changed. Um, there might be an opportunity to forgive someone, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But uh, outside of that, we need to invest our energy in doing those things that the Lord gives us the opportunity to do in the present each and every day and be filled with joy in the process of doing that. Number seven, this little piece indicated that we ought to realize that life is a school and you are here to learn. Um, hopefully we all understand that. Problems that we have in life are simply part of the curriculum that appear and then fade away 
like an algebra class, but the lessons you learn will last a lifetime. We have the problems, they come up. We work through them, we learn from them, and they teach us various and sundry lessons so that we don't uh, have to go back and experience, hopefully, those problems again in our lives. We, we learn from them. So indeed, life is like a school, uh, a process of learning. And learning didn't stop for us when we graduated high school or college. It just uh, sent us on our way to continue the learning process in the school of life. And no matter what age we are here tonight, we're not too old to learn. We can still learn and we should still be learning uh, from the school of life as we live each and every day. Number eight is to try to pay an honest compliment to somebody that you normally wouldn't give a compliment to. That's a good thing to do. Somebody that you wouldn't normally compliment, just give them a compliment. It will be amazing. It could be amazing what that would do in the life of another person and how it would maybe uplift their spirits or whatever at that particular time. We never know. But it would certainly enhance the joy of whatever song we sing as we worship our Lord each and every day, knowing that we have done our best to, to spread good seed for His honor and His glory along the way. Number nine is to remember that life is too short to waste time hating someone. Life is too short to live it with hatred in a person's life toward another individual. Unfortunately, a lot of people do that, which is why it needs to appear in our list. We don't want to go through this new year of 2024 with hatred in our hearts and lives toward anyone. I hope none of us do that. Life is too precious for us to do that, too precious. It's also too short because we do not have the promise of tomorrow. And we may be angry with somebody, we may be upset at somebody, but we should not let that anger cause us to get involved in the sinfulness of carrying hatred in our heart day in and day out. Sad thing whenever that occurs. Number 10, don't take yourself so seriously. Probably most of us do take ourselves too seriously sometimes. This little piece said nobody else does, so we shouldn't. We don't need to take ourselves too seriously, so we ought to just lighten up a little bit and enjoy the blessings of the Lord and the, the good things that He gives to us each and every day. Number 11 is realize that you do not have to win every argument. Not necessary to win every argument. We sometimes tend to think that we've got to always be the winner. But there comes times, as you heard me say, many, many times uh, since I've been here with you that we just simply need to agree to disagree, not fall out with one another. We may, we may not see eye to eye on a particular point or whatever, but we certainly should not feel that we've got to get the upper hand and win that argument. Maybe the best thing to do is just simply say, hey, brother, I love you, or sister, I love you, but you know, I, I, I don't see that just like you see it, but I tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna agree to disagree and still love one another, amen? That's what we need to do. And if we live like that every day in 2024, it would influence the worshipful spirit 
that we wish to express toward the Lord in our lives with singing whatever song we sing, be it a new song. And you might say, well, Pastor Joe, what would that new song be? I have no idea what it would be for you because I don't even really know what it would be for me. But sometimes I find myself humming a tune and putting words to that tune. Rosalie gets tickled at me every once in a while. And she will say, where did that come from? And it'll just be something that I'm expressing put to a little tune. And I kind of think that's what the psalmist had in mind here. Sing a new song with new words and express those words coming from the heart to the Lord for all that he has done. Number 12. Here's a great point, I think, for all of us. Don't compare your life to others, to those around you. The reason we don't need to compare our life to the other people around us is because we don't know what that person is experiencing in their life. And we will never know unless we were able to walk in their shoes. We're all old enough to understand that unless we walk in another person's shoes, we don't know what life is like for them. Life is different for all of us. And sometimes folks will say, you know, I wish I, I wish I was like so-and-so. I wish I was like John Doe. Man, I tell you what, he and his wife just seem like they've got it all together and everything's going in the right direction. They go to church. They go to Sunday school. They do everything together. It just looks like they, I, I wish my life was like that. When in fact, John Doe and his wife might be walking the most difficult journey imaginable because we do not know and we will never know unless we were able to get in the shoes of those individuals and walk the life that they are living. So we do not need to compare our life to others. We may we may not want to experience what other people experience like we think we would. Number 13, remember that no one is in charge of your happiness except you. You can choose to be happy or you can choose to be sad and melancholy. No one's in charge of it but you. God blesses each of us uh, to see the dawn of a new day if we are so blessed and we can choose to make it good or we can choose to make it bad. He gives us the choice. Uh, nobody else is in charge of our happiness. Uh, we hold that responsibility. And so let's use it well in 2024. Number 14, I said we would get to this. Forgive everyone for everything. Forgive everyone for everything. The best way to live life and have a new song to sing unto the Lord every single day is to not harbor ill will, <coughs> ill feelings in one's heart toward another individual. Far, far too many people are holding offenses in their heart against another person, thoughts, whatever. But we need to be a forgiving people. What if God had not have forgiven us of our sin through Jesus Christ? Something to think about, isn't it? Where would we be tonight? So the best policy that I could suggest for 2024 is to make sure that anything that comes up that uh, gives us a bit of uh, a problem, a little twinge in our mind or in our spirit, 
that we don't like, then we just need to pray right then that the Lord will help us to have a forgiving spirit, take care of it then, don't carry it with us, go ahead and be forgiving right then and there and let it be done with so that we can live a very, very blessed and enjoyable life. Never worry about what other people think of you as you honor the Lord in your life. His thoughts are the thoughts that matter after all, right? I had a problem with that in my young days. <clears throat> That's why it's a good reminder for me here in, in, in this list of things for 2024. In my young days, I used to worry... <clears throat> I guess I would say I, I pretty much worried incessantly about uh, what other people thought about how I was doing what I did, my way of preaching and uh, my mannerism and so forth used to bother me. I may have told you this before. I used to have problems because uh, of the fact that it was not natural for me to get out and move around and go all across the, the pulpit, up the aisle and back down the aisle, but I grew up with that style of preaching. So it's not unfamiliar to me, but whenever the Lord called me into the ministry, that was not natural for me. I tried to do it, but it didn't work. And one day the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and if you've ever had him to speak to your heart, you'll know it. You'll know clearly whenever he speaks. I knew clearly when he spoke and there were no audible words, but it was just as clear to me as it could be. Joe, I didn't call you to be like other people. I called you to be you. And in the pulpit, I want you to be you. And that's what you've seen ever since I've been here. You've seen me and how I feel the Lord leading me, not like somebody else does, not the mannerisms of somebody else, not trying to pattern myself after somebody else, just trying to pattern myself after the leadership of the Holy Spirit in my own life and not worry about what other people think. <clears throat> And I could go into more details about other things. You don't need to worry about what other people think of you as you honor the Lord with your life and you obey the leadership of the Holy Spirit and you do what He is leading you to do. He's the one that we're going to stand before. He will be the ultimate judge. No human being is going to judge us the Lord Jesus will be the ultimate judge and we will account to him for what we have done. Number 16, never forget that no matter how good or bad a situation is, it will change. Think about that. Now we like to make the good last as long as it can, but every once in a while it runs out, doesn't it? And so does the bad. We don't like for the bad to last so long. Sometimes it does, but it does change. In time, in time, good and bad both do change. So be aware of that as we go forward in 2024. We do not hope for the bad, but if we encounter bad, and we persevere, persevere through it, it will change. We hope for good. We do not know what God has out there in store for us, but if we do experience good for some period of time, it will change too. Good or bad, it will change. Number 17, your job and your critics will not take care of you when you are sick. Your family and your friends will, so stay in touch. We need to stay in touch with our family and our friends, don't we? 
stay in touch. Number 18, no matter how you feel, and this is hard to do sometimes, but no matter how you feel, every day, get up, get dressed, and show up. Now, if we have some of these bugs that are going around, we might not feel too good about getting up first thing in the morning. But God understands that, and we know that we have to work through that time. The idea here is that we do not find ourselves being a sluggard, but that we find ourselves being attentive to always be on point. That's the words I like to use. And that's what I pray for very often. Lord, help me to be on point. Like tonight, I wanted to be on point. Sunday morning, I want to be on point. Uh, every day, I want to be on point. And in order to be on point, I have to get up and uh, dress up and show up to do what I need to do what God is leading me to do. Number 19, always do the right thing. If you always do the right thing, you don't ever have to look back. Paul said that he did his very best to live every day so as to have a conscience void of offense. That means that he did not want to end the day having something on his mind that he knew he had not done the way it should have been done. Or if he had done something incorrectly, he had already dealt with it and asked the Lord to forgive him of it. He had made confession of it because he wanted to end the day with nothing on his mind, having a conscience void of offense. Always do the right thing. If we do the right thing, we don't ever have to look back and second guess ourselves. It's important as we go forward in 2024 that we do that. And the last thing, you've heard this expression. Uh, remember every day that you live that you're too blessed to be stressed. Uh, my missionary friend, every time I talk to him, and I talk to him uh, Monday, uh, we usually talk on the holidays. And I said, how are you, brother? He said, well, I'm too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> so I get that expression from him, you know, too blessed to be stressed. That's a good, that's a good word right there. Hopefully we'll think about that every day in 2024 that God is blessing us. We do not need to be stressed. Any stress that we have, we need to turn it over, over to Him. I believe if we incorporate these things into our lives here at the beginning of the year and do our best to live each day with their influences in their various ways in our lives, then we'll be able to sing daily a very worshipful song unto our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. May God bless each and every one of us as we do that in this new year. Father, thank you for our time together tonight. I love you. I love your word. I love the words of the psalmist here as he is encouraging us to sing a new song unto you and to show forth your salvation from day to day. Help us to be involved uh, consistently doing that, honoring you, obeying you, following your leadership in our lives, incorporating these things into how we live so that it will increase the intensity of how we worship you as we express our words in song or in prayer or however we express to you our thankfulness for your abundant blessings in our lives. Bless those that are not able to be with us tonight. Encourage them, lift up their spirits, return them to be with us soon. We do only pray in Jesus' name. Amen.